Hello and welcome to Python Fundamentals. In this course, we learn the underpinning Python programming skills, preparing for our journey towards mastering the Django framework and the Python programming language. This tutorial is part of a series of tutorials. You can find the link to the whole playlist in the video description. This tutorial is from our Python Programming Fundamentals for Django Developers course, which you can find and purchase on Udemy. You will find all the latest and updated tutorials, as well as resources and assessments to help accelerate your learning of the subject. The link to the course, which will always provide the best price, can be found in the video description. Now that we have seen the if statement utilized within a view, let's see if we can now utilize an if statement within a Django template. What we're going to try and do here is display different messages if the user is logged in. Now, at the moment, we only have one user, so it will be the admin user, but we're going to display a message to the user in the template based upon whether they're logged in or not. Right, so back in our application here, let's go into our new app, let's go into our template, let's go into our index page. Right, let's just add something here. We're going to add the user. We're just gonna type in user. Okay, you need to make sure you've got the double braces here. Just gonna add the word user. Okay, this doesn't represent anything we've built so far. So we're just gonna add user, let's give that a go. Right, so here I'm going to just uh, turn the server on if you haven't already done so. And let's go back into our home page here. Just go back to our home page. Right, so notice up here, we actually return the name of the user that's logged in. So behind the scenes here, Django is passing this information over to the template and we can access this information. So this is something that we can actually develop ourselves, although we won't discuss it here in, in these tutorials. But if we did want to have some, say, global information that we wanted to be accessible in all templates, we could set that up accordingly. And that's essentially what's happening here. Whenever we access this template, the template will have access to this global information. And that one of those is the admin user. So that means that we can utilize this information to determine whether someone is logged in or not. So to help us understand how this is even possible in the first place, let's imagine this is your browser. Okay, browser. So the user logs in, the user logs in, and what happens is that Django, so let's represent Django, Django will create, so the user's logged in, and then Django will send back to the user a session ID, okay, which is a, let's just, it's just a number. Let's, for example, make this a number. So what happens, a session ID, when the user logs in, is sent back to the browser. So the browser now has this information. So any refer requests, that the user makes to Django, the session ID will also be sent along with that request. So whenever the user now requests a web page, that session ID will be sent across to Django, which means that somewhere, let's say the database, inside the database, the session ID, let's uh, call that session ID just one, for example, that may match the session ID that's sent across from the user. If a match is made, then that means that the user is logged in. So anytime the user logs into Django, the session ID is created and saved in the database, and then the session ID is sent to the user. When the user accesses any other web pages, the session ID is sent across to Django. Django can match this up. If a match is made, then from that match, we can draw out who the user is by accessing, for example, the username that's associated to the session ID. And then we can also tell whether the user is logged in. So if the user is logged in, when they access a template such as this, and we try and access that hidden information, like we just seen there, we can actually then access the name and information whether the user is logged in or not. So let's use an if statement now. All right, let's go back into here. So let's uh, write some Python code. So we're going to need to go ahead and create an if statement. So if, if the user, we know what the user is. If the user, we know we can grab that information and let's use the built-in is 
authenticated. Okay, so is the user authenticated? So we're going to check to see if the user is authenticated. So we need to remember anytime we start, anytime we open, we need to close. So if needs to be closed. So end if. Okay, so those are our tags, if and end if. So now we can perform some sort of action. So let's go ahead and use a H6 here. Oh, don't want to use that, H6. And let's just say hello, and then we can say user. Okay, so we say hello user. So that's on the home page. So let's go back to our page, let's refresh, and now it says hello admin. Okay, so that could probably be a little bit larger. So let's do a H2 tag. And there we go. Now remember, every user has a username. Every user will have an ID, a, a unique ID associated to them. So all these, all this data can be accessed and potentially utilized to build if statements on the template and manipulate the template and present different data depending on who is actually logged in. Let's just change this to something we know because we don't know about these built-in features. So if user is equal to admin, let's say hello user. So this is something we're familiar with. Um, we're comparing um, the user. If user, so we're accessing this user again, which should be the word admin. Uh, if it if the equals admin, which hopefully it will do, because we know that when we print out user, it prints out the the name admin then potentially we're going to print this out again. Now that may not work, so let's give this a go. There we go. So why didn't that work? Well, because potentially user is an object. And you remember the Dunder string method, maybe potentially user is actually by default um, not going to equal admin a string. It's potentially going to equal or represent an object. Now this might be the Dunder string method that's being returned, for example. So that isn't necessarily going to be um, straightforward. So let's try user dot and then username. Let's give that a go. We go ahead and refresh. And this time you can see that it works. So user represents an object behind the scenes and we need to drill down. Remember we did this in a previous tutorial and when we looked at, for example, it was looking at the um, oh, the query sets, there we go. Uh, we, we're looking at query sets and how to drill down to the information inside of the objects. So here's the same type of principle. So now we've accessed the username and obviously now we're specifying that username, which is a string. We're matching it against a string and obviously this is now true. So therefore we're returning the true block. Now here, don't worry about indentation here. Okay, so we don't need to indent. This is ultimately, this is HTML text right here. So we don't need to worry about that in this case. 